Hi there, welcome to the Kenny Veach MK case mystery. Wanted to continue on with some discussions today. I'll be answering possible questions and looking for relevant, important information with what people have had to say in recent time in regards to the case and mystery. I selected a specific video in recent time as there was higher engagement there and a range of different comments and from new viewers, which is good to see. I said a video yesterday, um, I did check over those comments. I can try and respond back to some at a later point. But, you know, there wasn't much time yesterday, if you have seen that video. If you haven't already catched up on the video yesterday, be sure to check it out. It's quite an interesting one where I share with you the latest updated satellite imagery of both Kenny Veach's form of place of living and part of the M Cave hike route. Be sure to check that out when you do have time. Top right corner of the screen where the I symbol is, click on that, you'll be able to locate the video. And on top, there will be a playlist available covering everything on the Kenny Beach case, which I've looked at and analyzed, okay? So on top of this discussion video, if there's any miscellaneous comments or key points by myself, I can add in as we go along. Welcome to any of those that are currently here in this live premiere. Appreciate it. Feel free to share your thoughts, opinions, reactions in the live chat. And anyone in general, you want to leave any comments or thoughts, you want to elaborate on any points prior, leave your comments down below under this video and I'll check them out at a later point. You can also check my pinned comment out if you want. There is a link down below if you want to support this channel in one way or another. It's all there. So is it much of a backstory at this moment in time? Well, we're not on like a series of looking at something at this moment. Right? You'd be familiar with previous videos and analysis that I've done. I'm looking at individual points. I've got like a checklist and I'm just working my way through it. But in recent time, new ideas have come about. Not quite sure how long or short videos would be, but I will get round to doing them. I just thought, add this in, just slow the pace down just a little bit so it doesn't get too heavy and we go from there. If there is time, depending in what order I do things such as today, there might be two or three videos. I'm fully aware it runs the risk of YouTube punishing me, but at times there are so many ideas. I want to make videos, but if I drag it out too long, they may become not so relevant, invalid. So I think there is a time and place where you do force them out. And I'm aware now that some cases are more popular than others. The others I can make more videos on because I already know they're gonna be a failure to begin with. So once you know the situation, the score's been settled, there's no worry there. With the Kenny Veach case though, it's still somewhat popular, but it needs to be handled just right because there's some people out there that say, do this or do that, but does it really work? And that's what you got to assess. And there's a few comments here and there I can respond back to afterwards within this video. So don't go anywhere. Feel free to settle down or just talk amongst yourself in the live chat box. I'm going to begin reading and responding back to the comments of one of my recent Kenny Veach videos. Here we are, I'm just in it to the newest. Start from the bottom, work your way up. We've got Cleo there, shout out to Cleo. Got a person called Twinkie, interesting name, saying, I ne I love the coverage on Kenny. Where the heck is Kenny? So welcome to the channel, Twinkie. It's good to know that you like the coverage and my videos. Um, and yeah, where is Kenny? Well, I said there is some evidence which leans towards Kenny being out there in the desert, presumed missing, maybe even dead. But then there is also additional evidence pointing in a completely different direction to highlight, to suggest that he is still alive, or at least was alive up to a certain point, such as 2018 or 2022. For reference there, check my playlist out, because I do cover it. We've got Deborah. I do remember Deborah, quite a long time viewer. Says, thank you for sticking with the coverage of Kenny. I have a personal question for you. How do you keep your teeth so beautifully white? For a guy, you have really nice teeth. Please don't worry. I am 64-year-old lady from Australia who has followed your coverage of Kenny Veach since this all started. Cheers, Deborah. So I appreciate that, Deborah. Um, as for my teeth, 
maybe in the past they weren't always as white because of certain drinks it led to a bit of staining around the outline of the teeth which was unfortunate and it never went but then I decided to use a certain toothpaste I'm not sure what make it is and it just magically removed it it was kind of a surprise and I don't use it all the time because I don't want it to lose its effectiveness or value but here and there that's what I do Anything else from Australia? It's good to see. Not seen as many viewers from Australia in recent time. I don't know what's going on there. But I'm aware that when it comes to the Kenny Beach case, people from Australia, there is quite an interest over that way, which is good. This person called Barbara says, guys look after their teeth too. I think most people try to, but sometimes there's only so much you can do. And obviously the way dentists are nowadays, money-hungry dentist, dentist corruption and all of that. Sometimes you've got to take matters into your own hand and try and maintain your teeth. Other times things are out of your control, such as the environment you're in. We've got Glenn, shout out to Glenn. We've got Chris. What does Chris have to say? Looks like a new viewer saying it's confirmation bias to think you hear female laughter and then just say it's female laughter. So it looks like Chris, whoever this person is, is in a way calling Warlike Raph out. Chris says you ultimately don't know that unless we get some auditory spectral analysis to confirm what that noise is. It just seems like a lot of arguing convenience. Well, if we're talking about arguing and trying to solidify, put a point across, I think looking at the female laughter is probably the wrong sample to be assessing in the first place and claiming. More so, it would be on the debate between is Kenny Veach in the desert or alive caught on CCTV, right? The push there for trying to say he's alive and, and then the push back to say he's not. I think that's more relevant there than it is here. We can always go back over these comments by Chris shortly. Smooth Fishing says, Warlight Raph isn't saying anything is a fact. He is just giving ideas. Chris says, I would agree with you in this video, but the heavy emphasis in other videos that it should be accepted that someone else was with him is bothersome to the factual narrative. The thing is, Chris, when we talk about the factual narrative, you know, how much of a story do we have based on all the facts? Because when it comes to the police, when it comes to search and rescue, some of that information is very limited and they have remained very tight-lipped. So you just work with what you have and even such as with the hikers and their footage. Now, we talk about voices that comes in different ways. I think Chris has misunderstood my point, but we'll get back to that. Smear Fishing says, I've seen every video Warlike Raph has ever made on Kenny Beach and never have I heard him say it was a fact, just giving us as viewers opinions and ideas. Chris remains consistent, saying there's an entire video rampant speculation on other voices and severe implications concerning the source. I'm not going to argue with you. Just understand, trying to convince other people that there might be a more complicated solution might influence people to believe in a more complicated solution. That's it. Smee Fishing says, I've seen it, but I didn't see it that way. You did. Chris, we're not trying to argue, just stating my thing and respecting yours. Peace and love. So basically, Chris, it's your opinion at the end of the day, just like I'm giving you my opinion and ideas right? But factually speaking, we can have the facts, we can have the stats, we can have the hard evidence, but there is something unique which you, Chris, have severely failed to understand. You appear to be a new-ish viewer, or at least someone that's come out from the, the woodwork after some time. Bit of a default channel, not much contribution to the case from the looks of it, so let's just um, clear the scene right now and be realistic okay so chris is saying that i hear a female laughter well i said it sounds like a female laughter and if it sounds like a female laughter could that mean that kenny veach wasn't alone someone was hit with him 
Is that a possibility? There was a lot of questions and suggestions. Now, I think Chris takes that as because I was very repetitive in putting that idea across. It came across as if it was a fact, but it really was the case. But I just kept pushing and pushing in terms of questions and possibilities because it wasn't just the female, supposed female laugh. It was other sounds along the way on his hike. What could this be? What could that be? With question marks in my individual made videos. And even down Pitcher Canyon, where it clearly said, follow the red tape. Whispers. Almost paranormal-like. What's going on there? Strange. Now, what about the actual facts? Where's the facts of an actual person being there on site with Kenny Veach? That's what Chris is kind of getting at. When it comes to moments like that, old footage, there is no way of really getting the facts in proving that someone was behind the camera or stood next to Kenny behind the camera because it's already done. It's old footage, like archived footage. You can't just go back in time just like that. You've got to be realistic, right? There's no other camera angles. So you can only work with what you have, which is extremely limited. One piece of footage from one camera angle and perspective, right? So that's why the suggestions come across. Even if you went there to prove it yourself, you couldn't because Kenny's long gone, right? In one way or another. And if someone was with him with the time, they're long gone by now. <laughs> so if you tried retracing the steps, it just wouldn't be possible. So all you've got to work with is audio and sound. Try and analyse it. Try and enhance it. Turn the volume up. And I had done that with other audio. But Chris, it looks like you failed to take a look at that, which is very disappointing. But the key thing is, which kind of reinforces the idea, reinforces the opinion that maybe Kenny Veach wasn't alone out there in some way or another, whether that be another, another human being or, on the paranormal side, alien side, the unexplained. Because when it came to actual hikers that have actually been out there, Jeff Clark, more so Jay Chuck through his experiences, SB Vegas Adventures, Sean Horlacher, Scott Natal, each of those hikers, excluding Jeff Clark, ended up hearing footsteps. And some of the hikers, like J. Chuck and SB, heard whispers and voices. No one was around, and when they got the camera out, there was no proof or facts that there was an actual person there with them. So, if it's not of a human being, and it's more of a mysterious side, it's harder to prove. Unless somehow you manage to pick up the audio at least. Just like how ghost hunters do with their EVP recordings and spirit boxes. Whether you believe in it or not. They might not be able to prove that an actual person is stood there in front of them, but they're picking up the audio and the, the frequency, the wavelengths of something being present and active due to the energy within the area in the environment. And if it just so happens that the energy within the environment of where Kenny Beach was hiking in at the time could correlate to the sounds. Once again, possibilities and ideas. But that's what this case is all about. And I think what Chris has misunderstood is that relentless drive in trying to keep mysteries and stuff alive and in the eyes of the general public so more people see and hear about it to encourage others to investigate, share their thoughts, ideas, counter with points, debunk or reinforce. That's what's needed. But Chris sees that as if I'm trying to plaster it as a fact and trying to brainwash everyone, but I'm not. But I'm sure Chris would backtrack and say, well, you're putting words into my mouth now, this and this and that. Well, you've already done it, okay? So let's not go there down the route of hypocrisy. See, this is what the reality is. As hardened as I may be going, because I've analysed humans long enough and I've seen how people act and behave online through the different cases, right? It takes 0.5 seconds now. Even in conversations and discussions, most of the time they can be pointless on a live basis because I already know how the conversation is going to go and what they're going to say. So I might as well do all the talking on behalf of them and then close the conversation and terminate it like that. And some people would say that's very narcissistic, but reality is, okay? I know how humans work and I know how they like to act at times and it is very disappointing, but it is what it is. That's life.
anything else to add on. No need to waste any more time there. So hopefully there's a reality check. This person saying, check last comment on your creepy cryptic message found in Kenny Veach case video. So this person here, in case anyone's interested, seems to be a cryptic channel, right? One of those. Like, what would you call it? An ARG game, possibly? Now, if one was to entertain the idea of that and push it further, then it would probably only lead to a further response down the line. And do we need that? Probably not. See, some people can put the argument across and say, when you cover something and it might be unpopular or it might stray slightly away from the case, you're kind of bringing it upon yourself, you're bringing trouble to your own door when you cover or engage in that type of stuff. That's yes. Sometimes it does need to be monitored and documented just in case for future references, right? We've got David Bell once again, leaving some idiosyncratic comments, kind of interesting and also kind of odd at times. I don't know if he's trying to be cryptic or not. We've got Jeff Clar says, I read a recent comment, I think on GLP, that the military is actually trying to protect the public from something linked to that location by restricting it. Probably impossible to prove one way or the other, but I have never heard it put that way before. They're actually trying to ban that location because they cannot control something dangerous by its link there. That would explain some things. It definitely would, and it would be understandable. And it might just be coincidental after Kenny Veach. Unless, if it is to do with trying to contain something which has been emitted, it could be radiation, it could be some kind of toxins, and it could harm people if they were in the area or got too close. Maybe upon hearing about the story of Snakebit McGee, Kenny Veach, as how he publicly stated of what he's seen and what he's done and being out there, it caught the military's attention and thought, hmm, we need to prevent this from anyone else getting harmed or hurt. And then when hearing about him going missing, maybe they took that as a directive order to state something, put it, in, put it in motion, but it's not worked out. It's a very interesting alternative way of looking at it, so it's good that Jeff Claus added this on, possibly on GLP, which is very interesting, Jeff Clark. A post on GLP which actually has some form of reasoning? Wow. That's um, a first, possibly. And when I say reasoning, I don't mean being crazy or out of the ordinary, but actually slowing things down and not making everything about UFOs or aliens. Something maybe a bit more, I don't know, whether it be man-made or from this earth being emitted. Who knows? Unless people then throw on and say there's reptilians and aliens somewhere that are coming out of places and are dangerous to people and it needs to be controlled unless it goes off down that branch. But... My question is, um, how come no action was taken or was there any action taken when Sean Horlacher went out there, recorded his hike out there and even showed himself up against a covered up cave from the looks of it and then got ill afterwards? Is that similar to Kenny Veach? I don't know. Kenny Veach, though, with where he was at, and he did walk past the area Sean Horlacher was at, Kenny didn't throw up, did he? So maybe separate occasions, separate things. We've got, we've got Robbie saying, it's only an opinion, I have no proof, that's fine, but I still believe Kenny is still alive and well and living elsewhere, not living under a tree out there someplace. I also believe it wasn't Kenny that left his phone and coins, it was a helper wearing Kenny's boots, then swapped boots and carried the boots out, so his tracks stopped at the mine. I also believe it was Kenny and one helper there, because if there were more hikers going out there, there'd be several tire marks at Kenny's at Joe May Road. As for sinister ideas of tent and sword, I have no idea, but we'll never know if they're connected to Kenny's demise. I'm just saying. There's still a wave of people in the background that believe that Scott Natal planted the tent and sword there, which is a interesting. Robbie says... It's also very possible that Kenny was long gone and living elsewhere and two helpers drove Kenny's truck out there, dropped coins, etc., then returned in the second vehicle. Kenny's car doesn't mean it was Kenny there. Okay, fair enough. 
Um, moving on, skeptical. That intro. Oh yeah, the intro. Yeah. <laughs> Who signed the logbook on the day he went missing? I don't know. I'm not even sure if the logbook would date back that far ago, unless they update the logbook and add or take pages off. I don't know where they end up. I mean, um, Jeff Clark, did you look at the logbook? Any of the hikers that have been out there since, did you check the logbook? And when does it date back to, out of interest? There is a chance not everybody will sign it, possibly. Smooth fishing, I don't believe for a second that Scott Natal would plant the sword. Okay, fair enough. Bad Waldo, thanks for the clickbait. Arse pie. Okay. So we're getting that wave again of people with slanderous claims. So from that photo of um, a black individual with a lampshade on their head, I mean, there's a small possibility that that looks like a scene from the Five Guys meme. Who knows what's going on there? But if you talk about wearing lampshades on your head to make you appear a bit brighter and lighter than you actually are, don't worry, I've already tried it. And I got the lampshade stuck on my head in the past. But yes, this pathetic excuse of an individual, once again, misinformation, slanderous claims. Keep whining, keep complaining, and being a statistic on this channel, if that's the only thing you're good at. Badger Life, I agree, he was not alone, and he knew them. Mm -hmm. Then this guy called Tom says, if Kenny is ever found, you'll have to get a real job. Oh my god. That means I've got to work with the penguin population and all the snakes in the grass then. I've got to be a zookeeper. Oh no, that's too much to handle, man. Too hard to handle the truth. Anyway, I mean, if that really is the case, Tom, then that would mean the personal cheerleader of complaining, which may be you, you wouldn't have that role anymore. So what would you do then? Oh no, oh no. Anyway, I think what people do forget is, besides Kenny Veach, there are other cases and mysteries out there. And one of the definitive ones, such as on my channel, a key turning point on this channel for alternative growth in many different ways and support on this channel, the most ever seen before. Shout out to the people from the Dylan Rounds community and onwards, the Dylan Rounds case. Okay, that was a good example of one. Maybe with time, and hopefully I do find other cases that gel and work well on my channel, because as interesting as the Kenny Veach case is, it's always good here and there to, you know, cover a different case. Change it up a little bit. We've got a person here called Will. I think his brother knows exactly where he is. Wasn't there a mysterious break-in they think was most likely him due to his familiarity? Yes, in 2018, the Las Vegas uh, break-in at the healing store, Enchanted Forest, Reiki Healing Store, in which it's owned by the sister, Kenny Veach, Debbie Veach, who, in a way, maybe a little bit reluctant here and there, as for the investigation, came to an end fairly shortly after it happened. Not much resolve or anything like that, right? Not as pushy as they were in more so recent time when $50,000 worth of items were stolen. A second time round, a second break in. This time more successful as for the intruders. But yeah, you're saying that his brother. So his brother, Kenny Veach's brother, Raymond Veach, may know where he is. Well, if he assisted, well, there is that possibility. Now, obviously, you got the Kenny Veach documentary in which the daughter, Vicky Veach, and maybe some of us were saying how, no, nah, that's not Kenny Veach in the CCTV footage. Okay, but maybe, well, you weren't saying the same thing earlier on in those text messages. Hmm. And take in mind that it, it's a bit of a coincidence how CCTV footage comes out, it's analysed, assessed, put out there in the public view, and then what follows afterwards is a reaction from some of the family members saying, yes, that is Kenny. It really is, including the daughter. Then that follows through with an official public documentary in which those people backtrack on themselves and say, nope, not Kenny. It's got nothing to do with it. Hmm. Funny how that documentary does not credit my channel for my analysis because I was the first and really only one to do it at the time on YouTube. Funny how they didn't really mention or credit in depth GLP, where it originally originated from, and the original thread and discussions. Typical. Funny how the documentary mentions nothing about Vicky Veach's original reaction of saying it was Kenny Veach, 
then backtracking in the public documentary. It's interesting how people's responses and replies can differ between behind the scenes, behind closed doors, in the public, you know, away from the public eye, and then compare that to a public response. They differ. They change. They backtrack. I wonder why. Not a good look, is it? Maybe not. Father and son says, so the visitor centre, the DNWR, didn't have any cameras that day that recorded the cars to go in or out in the case somebody gets lost or goes missing. Personally, I've not really checked for cameras on the buildings surrounding area, but I'm sure there'll be some kind of trail cameras, surely. But even if there was cameras in the area, were they actually checked? If they weren't, by now, it'd probably be long lost, the footage, because I'm, I'm sure they wouldn't archive stuff from that long ago now. So, mm. And I guess it depends on the theory of what. It'd be a fair point to mention, but if there's different ways of getting to Joe May Road, if, for example, Kenny did go to... Um, you know, up to the mine shaft, went down Joe May Road in his own vehicle or not, or someone drove him in his own vehicle, let's just say. And he disposed of his items at the mine shaft and then walked back and got picked up by somebody else. Would that have drove past back to the DNWR, the centre? He said there was cameras then, you could see what comes and goes, and I would understand your point, Father and Son. I would understand. But because it's so long gone now, I don't think they would have that footage, which is a shame. In addition, this person says, I haven't even followed this for years. I didn't know it was still going on. I just happened to look the other day, but it's crazy. I remember being needy way back when Sean, before he changed his name, was doing his videos at the current time. It's probably five, six years ago, maybe seven years ago. And the thing I thought... I was with him, was it, when he did locate? Wait, what are you saying? You followed Sean Horlacher in the past five, six or seven years ago when he was doing his early hikes, and you say, I thought I was with him, was it, when he did locate that spot that looked like the spot where the end table was patched up? Wait, are we doing some kind of woodwork session with tables and chairs? <laughs> I'm assuming that this person's talking about the covered up cave, and if so, this dates back to 2019, Sean's final hike out there. But this person says, um, the same exact spot where Kenny wasn't, wasn't his video reset, man. I thought the cave was like, right here, quoting Kenny, right. Then Sean got sick, which could have been radiation poisoning, some poisoning or something. But the weird thing is that the way he totally fell off, changed his name and went in a whole direction different on his channel. It makes me really wonder if he didn't find out something and I was shut up. They keep his life intact, just wondering. So basically he's saying that due to Sean Horlacher changing his name, his channel privatising, restricting some of his videos on and off with time and not being as active now and not really talking about the case as much now, if not at all. That could be all because of his 2019 hike, got too close to the truth, was silenced, attacked, close assassination, chip implanted in his shin, had dreams or nightmares onwards and even stalked at his house, his yoga mat torn up outside with claw marks going down it and dodgy bikers hanging outside his house and possibly trying to assassinate him. Mm. And then Atari said some kind of family life in the background, divorce with the wife. Who knows what's going on, right? I personally think Sean Horlacher did change somewhat because at the time when the, supposedly the US was under attack and he was, I guess, defending the US and with the politics going on at the time, that kind of diverted his attention from the case, right? As for the spiritu spirituality part, that can be its own theme and topic online, different discussions, communities, but it just so happens to tie in more with Kenny Veach because of the land, the environment, and Kenny being a spiritual person when it comes to outright politics and JFK and JFK's son, JFK rising from the ground, telegram, telegram messages, Q and on, and all of that. Yeah, it doesn't really link to Kenny Veach, so if you get distracted by that, 
you're moving away from the case. And if you do change in behaviour, people then could assume that that's a cause due to what you were previously engaging in with Kenny Veach, right? I mean, there's been times where I've changed things or gone in other directions just because I felt like it and people thought that was linked to the Kenny Veach case when it wasn't. So some people can be a bit over-observant at times. We've got a new viewer from the looks of it, Matt Meta Wolf. Interesting name. Matt says, giving a timestamp within my own video, 29 minutes, 11 seconds, says, that leads to another question. And problem in this, if he basically, let's just say, he had a firearm on him, Kenny Veach, whilst he had a bunch of people with him supposedly speaking, or more or less hypothetically, for lack of a better word, and he was going out on his trip and his plan B was to end his life, you would think that a lot of people would try to, you know, talk him down before so doing it, making sure he doesn't become a danger. Let's just say nobody has a gun of their own and they try to wrestle it out of his hands and restrain him to prevent him from being a danger on this trip. Worst case scenario, your guide is basically mentally unstable, probably might kill you and kill everybody else in more ways than one on his hiking trip. Yeah, if you are unstable or you're not quite thinking clearly, you could be the expert, but you lead people down a wrong path or a dead end or a bloody hole in the ground and people's lives could be at danger there. Um, and in other ways too, unstable could be a danger to the people visiting, right? But surely if anything that crazy happened, there would be at least one witness that would come forwards, right? The only reason why there wouldn't be a witness coming forward is if a person or people were responsible for Kenny's disappearance, hence why they're not going to speak. And if it wasn't that, then probably the chances that anyone with Kenny, if Kenny Veach ended in a certain way, maybe other people around him did. So there was no witnesses, whether that be by foul play or an accidental death, going on a hike. But surely then... If there was hikes conducted out there with time, search and rescue and the independent volunteers, etc., surely would have come across a collection of bones, possibly, more than one human bones. At least up to now, no one's found any human bones out there, only animal. So there is that, but fair points. Then Matt says, so I thought I had... So I thought I had, are there any other people who have gone missing during the same time as Kenny that basically have a similar story, like saying that they were going on a trip or something like that and they never came back? Or let's say they were going hiking or planning to go hiking in somewhere at the same facility as Kenny the day he went missing because you'd think those people would be just as important or unsung persons of interest. I mean, anything is possible, but that would make me want to know. So are there any of the missing people out there? Some out there say, yeah, of course, there's many. And we're like, many? How many? Really? I think it's exaggeration. There's other people out there that say, oh yeah, many bodies are buried in that desert area in the Mojave Desert and Jermay Canyon and drug dealing and murders and all that. And I'm thinking, where's your proof? It's another exaggeration. I think a lot of humans out there do go off the rails when it comes to their thoughts of the area, and even the visitors. People say many, many hikers have been out there. No, they haven't. Been a handful over the course of years. Of course, as the years go on, the tally will total up to more people going out there or returning. But in proportion to the area, in comparison to populated areas and tourist attractions, there's a big difference between them. It's a remote, desolate area for a reason. That's why people aren't as encouraged to go there. Only the extremes and the ones that want a challenge and those that may want to find something like Kenny and like the hikers in recent time. But as for missing people besides Kenny, who are they? Well, do we have any official missing person reports out there? No, I've not seen any. So you could say officially there are no missing people out there at the time or around the area of where Kenny Veach went missing, right? As for stories online, a person called Eric the Hiker in contact with Sharon Pilgrim, Kenny Veach's ex-girlfriend, in 2016 or so, when Eric, on Twitter, there was a conversation, but his tweets or responses or account was deleted, and Sharon was responding back saying, it's been a few days now, I've not heard from you. Are you okay? What's happened? So basing off that, 
But Eric set out there looking for Kenny and was never heard or seen again. What was that all about? It's a shame. As vocal as Sharon Pilgrim is online or was at the time with YouTube about describing Kenny Veach and what probably happened to him, it's a shame Sharon Pilgrim never brought it up about Eric the Hiker personally reaching out to her on social media, such as Twitter. Why has that never been talked about by Sharon? What they're hiding, I wonder. Mousetrap, you're welcome. Um, we got Ta Talil, Talil saying, Raf, do you know how extensive the police investigation was on the case? They got his phone, I assume they searched it, his laptop, computer and his girlfriends. If there were messages organising a meetup, I assume they would have been found. If his girlfriend was going with him, did she have an alibi for where she was if she wasn't with him, apart from the conclusion that they can't rule out that he is alive? Had the police let out any of the info? So if you've covered this before, let me know and I'll hunt the video down. If you have. Okay, so that's fine, no problem. I'll try and give you my thoughts, at least from what I can remember. Okay, so when it came to some of the items at first, the phone, the coins, the vehicle located by search and rescue, they searched Kenny's vehicle, found nothing of interest. As for Kenny's phone, there was no reports of anything of interest or suspicion found on it. When the police and whoever went down to Kenny's house to check it out and check his computer, his search history, they found multiple searches reading, help me, help me, which then the girlfriend, ex-girlfriend, Sean Pilgrim, assumed that that's probably linked with suicide because he had depression and he talked about ending his life in the past and what he would do if he got to that stage and that point, how he doesn't want to be found, right? But this is the thing, just because you say help me, help me in your search results, that could mean help me, I need money, because Kenny Beach had money issues. That's not been mentioned or acknowledged by the police or the girlfriend, right? Help me in how do I figure this game out? How do I figure out this solution? How do I wash a window? Can you help me? I need advice on this and that. Doesn't always have to be to do with suicidal points. There can be other themes. How to, how to do this, how to do that. Humans nowadays, but many search histories of how do you do this? How can you help me? How do I make money? How do I grow my channel? How do I become popular? How do I get likes? Help, help, help. Okay? So just because they went on a search history and, and it said, help me, I need help. What did he actually search or click on besides the search term? What videos did he watch? What websites did he look at? That was never mentioned by the police or anyone extremely disappointing. Then, it was said that the sister-in-law Susan Veach stated that the police didn't look at everything as for the equipment of Kenny. I think laptop, his phone, they didn't do a deep dive on it, so things were missed out, possibly. Now, when I did the video at that time, and it probably a few months ago, it did backfire. Strangers online, some weren't too happy and didn't believe in what Susan said. But if you take their word for it, Susan being a sister-in-law to Kenny Beach and present at the time, you'd think they'd know more than a person online. But, you know, some people need convincing more with harder evidence. Harder evidence, I understand in a way. Anything else to mention? Hmm... Organised meetup, alibi for the girlfriend, never really mentioned about the girlfriend, where she was or what she was doing at the time, never heard about that, which is unfortunate. As for the phone, as for Kenny's vehicle, well, it was in possession of police at first, then I believe it was handed over to, I don't know about the phone, but the vehicle was handed over to Vicky Veach up to a certain point. And I think at a later point, there was talks that it was taken to a chop shop or a scrap yard or so. Um, that's at least what I can remember. Okay. Anything else? Shout out to Mikkel. Mikkel. 
Sorry, I was in school, but I'm watching the replay. Keep up the good work. I enjoyed it. So that's good to know. Glad you liked the video. And there should be more to come with time. So we've got through all those comments there, some interesting points to mention. Now, there was an additional comment here and there what I saw recently, but it was on my community post, I believe. As someone was talking about, hey, I don't want to be looking or traipsing through all your videos on Kenny Veach because there's so many of them and they're, they're really old and boring now. I think you should make a video basically mentioning all the important mysteries and findings and do it all in one video. See, there are problems with that and there is another counterpoint to that person giving some form of constructive criticism, I guess. So reality is, if I did a summary video mentioning every key finding, every strange occurrence, of course it would take time to recollect it all to put into one video. But because it being a summary, it would be very vague. And at times, a vague title of the video will fail to perform and not many people will bother to watch it. I've experienced it in the past. That's why a dedicated focused video is more effective and gets more reach and you can spread it out in the different areas and elements of findings and that's already been done so why not complement it with a summary well that's where my counterpoint comes in to that person giving the criticism it just so happens that on and off i did provide summary videos of points of interest and key findings. I applied it on the maps. I did a summary map analysis at one point. I've done map analysis of the key points of interest and in the findings along the way and actually talking it through bit by bit within one video. And it just so happens that Jeff Clark has gone above and beyond. I think it might have been an Excel sheet or some notepad of all the bullet points of all the ongoing mysteries and findings which have not been solved yet. So whilst that's what Jeff Clark's done, I've done my own thing here and there. And this is what leads on to the next point. At times you will get humans that will offer criticism or constructive criticism by telling someone to do this or to do that. And to be honest, um, Actually, I'll, I'll mention the extra point shortly. Don't go anywhere. Whilst people do issue out critiques and responses, whatever they're saying or doing, it just so happens that I've done something what they're suggesting already. If they actually did their research, then they wouldn't be complaining. If they looked elsewhere, such as Jeff Clark's channel, they wouldn't be complaining, right? There are summaries already available. There are bullet points already available. And there are focused, dedicated, separate videos to each individual topic already covered. All under control. But I think strangers don't have it exactly under control. Hence why they complain it. If they knew, if they were able to look and find this stuff, then we wouldn't be here, okay? And, you know, an interesting thing, and I'll probably do this as a post on my community page, because that's what I'm trying to do nowadays, do a community post where I can share my thoughts, opinions and analysis without it getting in the way of my videos. Here and there I've done videos, dedicated ones of this type of stuff. That's been done at times where there's not really been many ideas of covering more important situations, right? But because nowadays there's like more focus on cases and mysteries, that's more important. But I still want time to be able to share my thoughts and opinions on things, hence why I do the community tab and post. It's away from videos, it doesn't get in the way of that, but I can still share my thoughts. So what I'm about to say now, I can actually repost in a way, roughly, on a community post. One pattern I've noticed, when it comes to criticism and more so constructive criticism, and people do use that term as well, in response to my response to the criticism, they say, you don't take constructive criticism very well. And a couple of people have said that with time now. And where's the evidence to prove that? Because if you look back at my videos, I've done many experiments and many experiments have been influenced by the either criticism or the um, suggestions along the way. And maybe fairly often, they didn't work, but I still gave it a try. And when there's been viewer request, 
I've taken that on board as well. So I must clearly be listening in order to make changes along the way and adjustments, even though they mainly fail. So in my own stubborn mindset, I will have ideas of what to do, right? And what can work and what doesn't. But on and off, there may be times where I'm like, you know what, let's just try something else. Let's see if what that person is suggesting would really work. And maybe it doesn't always. But there is a big, big difference between the tone and the underlying message. Basically, when it comes when it comes to criticism and constructive criticism, there is a covert undertone of a certain attitude and what's your term for it? A patronizing tone in how they speak and how they talk. Not with you, but they talk at you. They tell you. Okay? They're like the YouTube police. Tends to be default channels, tick. Tends to be people never heard of before, tick. Tends to be people that come out from the woodwork all of a sudden. Oh, all of a sudden. Isn't it interesting though how their only response to my response is, this is only criticism, this is only constructive, you're taking it the wrong way, you, you know, you, you're you not listening, blah, 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 blah. Why is their tone in such a sharp tip of like a sword with a drip of poison on the end of it, in a wrapped up and masked in a covert way with an undertelling tone of patronising behaviour and a bombastic attitude? Can you please respond to that and explain? No, because they can't. And if they do try, well, it's like a revolving door, isn't it? Perfect example of how things should be and how they are with certain high standard people, such as on my channel. There are individuals on and off. Perfect examples like Christy. Christy is a perfect example. Maybe some of the people are skeptical. And then the odd stranger as well, where they've said, why not cover this? Why not try this? Why not try that? Why not change that? They're not saying you should. They're not saying you must, but they're saying, why not give it a try? Maybe. Possibly. It's not forceful, right? It's not demanding. There's no toxicity. There's no underlying covert tone. It's all honest and mainly positive and hopeful in general that maybe something can come from it, right? Um, and this is like the excuse some people will use in the background where they'll, you know, the ones that are giving the constructive criticism that will say, we're only doing this to help you, but they're kind of like backtracking to make themselves look innocent, positive and good people, you know, the strangers, but they're still trying to slip in the insult. They're still trying to slip in the um, the critiques, but in a, in a more negative, toxic way, right? Take in mind, I'm quite a master at picking up on this because I've seen it a lot within humans over time. And when it came to the Dylan Rounds case, a perfect example of a dark, toxic individual that's influenced by religion, but does not follow the guidelines or mentality or the ethics of it, would be Indiana 59 at the time. Somewhat of a positive individual, somewhat playful, okay? But secretly, the devil's daughter, as they labelled themselves, which is <laughs> they a contradiction to what they follow, their passive aggressiveness showing at a later point, their distaste and hatred towards warlike wrath, false slanderous claims made, a complete turnaround and change in behaviour and attitude, almost like a volcano, which was always there but lay dormant until something triggered them, and then they let it all flow out. And on and off, changing in, giving a positive message or a neutral comment with a slight little critique or a backhanded compliment on me, okay? They could say something like, oh yeah, in this case, this could have happened, that could have happened, and there's a possibility that at this time and in that moment, things may have happened in the background, but you know, well, like, Raph, you wouldn't know because you don't do your research. It's like, okay, 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 and then suddenly it's a dig at me. <laughs> Why are you aiming at me? you still got that passive aggressiveness. And I think that's what these humans are that give constructive criticism, passive aggressive individuals that backtrack on themselves to make themselves appear like an angel when they're not. People can give out criticism, but in a way of advice. 
and advice can be more positive, less patronising. Advice suggesting what you can do and what you can change, that's perfectly fine. But a constructive criticism part is by labelling and insulting the creator and then telling them what they should be doing. And take in mind, why as you can say, the customer is always right. Do they have experience themselves? Absolutely not, because they're not even a creator. But for the viewers that give advice and it's positive and it's natural and they don't have experience with their own channel, yet they still conduct themselves in an appropriate way, high standards, very good, right? And it just so happens to be people, not all, but some or most from the Dylan Rounds case and community. I've just got a very good memory when it comes to tracking back with people and where people come from and the patterns and trends along the way, in case anyone's wondering, okay? As I said, this is a discussion video on the case and the community. Not everyone will like that. Some rolls their eyes back at it, tough. That's what we do here, right? You want to go in hard? Well, we can do that at another point. You want to analyse something, it'll be very visual. We can do that at another point, but no harm in doing this every now and then. I've not done a video like this for some time, so it makes a change, I guess. So, as for the next video that I do, I guess it depends based on if I made videos earlier on today. There's no guarantee because this video was made before possibly making those. So as a heads up, if by any chance I did record more than one video today, be sure to check my earlier videos out today. You should be able to find them top right corner of the screen where the I symbol is. Okay. So thanks for watching. Appreciate it. See you next time. Goodbye. Good night for now.